In this video, I will be teaching you about binomial theorem. So in my last video, I talked about Pascal's triangle. So Pascal's triangle. Now, you don't necessarily have to watch the last video to understand this video, but I think that Pascal's triangle is very important in understanding binomial theorem. And once again, it won't be coming in your exam, but it's just a very interesting thing to know, and it helps you kind of understand why we're doing this and how it works. So when we were looking at Pascal's triangle, what we saw is that there was a sort of pattern forming within the triangle. And that pattern was related to NCR, or choosr, or what we called combinations when we did our chapter on permutations and combinations. And when you end up putting it all together, you end up getting a an equation that shows you how to expand different polynomials. So say for example that you have a plus b whole to the power of n. The equation for the expansion ends up being a to the power of n plus n c1 times a to the power of n minus 1 times b plus n c2 times a to the power of n minus 2 times b squared. And this just keeps on going depending on how big n is. So you can get plus n c3 times a to the power of n minus 3 times b cubed. And this can keep on going until you end up getting n c n times a to the power of n minus n, which is 0, times b to the power of n. And since this is equal to 1, and this is also equal to 1, so we get 1 times 1, 1 times 1 times b to the power of n. So we can simply rewrite this as b to the power of n. So plus b to the power of n. Now some of you may be familiar with c in a slightly different form. So instead of writing it like this, we're also able to write it like, so this will be equal to a to the power of n plus n choose 1 times a to the power of n minus 1 times b plus n choose 2 times a to the power of n minus 2 times b squared and then we eventually get plus b to the n. So that's just another way to write the same thing. And the sort of pattern that we see over here is that the power of a is decreasing every time. So the power of a is descending and the power of b over here is increasing with every um, new addition. So the power of b is increasing. And all the while, and this whole time, we're taking n c of different or of higher numbers. So 1, then 2, then 3, and then going all the way up until we have n c n. Now all there really is to binomial theorem is plugging in the values of these expressions and opening brackets. So let's look at an example. So let's say that we have x plus 5 whole to the power of 4 and we want to expand this. So what we end up getting is, well, a to the power of n. So a over here is equal to x. Our b value is equal to 5, so b is equal to 5. And n, or the power we're taking it to, is 4. So the value for n is equal to 4. And now we just need to plug this into our equation. So a to the power of n is the same thing as x to the power of 4 plus, then we have nc1, so 4c1 times x to the power of n minus 1, which is x to the power of 3 minus 1, or, or 4 minus 1, which is 3, and then times b, plus, then we have nc2, so 4c2 times x to the power of n minus 2, which is x squared, and then times b squared, and then we get plus for c3 times x to the power of n minus 3, which is x to the power of 1, times b, and then plus, or actually times b cubed, 
plus 4c4, or actually just b to the n. So plus b to the n, which is b to the fourth. And everywhere I wrote b, I should have written 5, actually. So this is 5. This over here is 5 squared. This is 5 cubed. And this is 5 to the fourth. Now we can solve these values of c and the powers of 5 and find our final expression. So we have, let's write this out, x to the power of 4 plus 4c1 gives us 4. So we get 4 times x to the third times 5. So 4 times 5 times x to the third plus 4c2 gives us 6, so we get 6 times 5 squared, which is 25 times x squared, and then plus 4c3, which is 4. So we get 4 times 5 to the third is 125, 125 times x, and then plus 5 to the fourth, that's 125 times 5 which is 625, 625. So we can op open this up a bit further. What we end up getting is x to the power of 4 plus 20x cubed plus 6 times 25 is 150, so 150x squared plus um, 4 times 125 is I think 500. 500x plus 625. So that wasn't too bad. All we just had to do was plug in the values of a, b, and n. Another type of question that you may be asked is where you're asked to find a specific coefficient. So somebody may ask you to find, or a question may ask you to find, in the expansion of x plus 5 to the fourth power, find the coefficient of x. So we already solved for this and we already opened it so we get that the coefficient of x is 500 because this expression over here is plus 500x. So our answer is 500. But it won't always be as easy as this because over here we'd already opened it up and there were only four powers. So what would we do if we were asked to solve for something for a much larger expansion? So let's say that we are asked to solve for um, given the expression 2 minus x to the power of 25, we are asked to solve for the coefficient, the coefficient of x to the power of 20. The extremely long way to solve this would be to open up the entire thing and we'd end up getting 26 different terms and then finding out which value of x has the power of 20. But there's actually a much easier way to do it. So remembering the binomial theorem above, what we get for every value is n c of something, so n c of something, times a to the power of n minus something times b to the power of something. So for this equation, we can take a is equal to 2, b is equal to negative x, and n is equal to 25. So we want to find out when x is to the power of 20. And since we took b as negative x, when the power of b is 20, then that means that the power of x will also be 20. So what we do is we plug in 20 for the power of b, so there'll be b to the power of 20, then we get n minus 20 and nc 20. So once again, we wanted to find where the coefficient of x is 20. So since we took x to have the value of b or we plugged in negative x for b, what we simply do is we take b to the power of 20 and then find what the other values associated with that will be. So we can solve for this. n is 25, we get 25c20 times a, which is 2, 
2 to the power of 25 minus 20 and then times negative x to the power of 20. So we can put this into our calculator which gives us 53130 which is the value of this and then times 2 to the power of 5 so 2 to the power of 5 is equal to 32 and then times x to the power of 20 the negative sign goes away because this power is positive so we can multiply these two together times 53130 this gives us a value of 1700160 times x to the power of 20 so the coefficient is one seven zero zero one six zero.